Hey guys, John here. This video is going to cover properties. So what's a property? Well, it's easier for me to to show you what a property is and then explain it. So here I have a custom class here, just or just a normal class, properties. Here it's from auto behavior. Uh, I'm going to put this on a game object, it's fine. Uh, here's a property. Have you ever typed, for instance, time.times time dot delta time I'm sure you all have right do you see here in the tooltip it says delta time and then the brackets and then get that's a property that get means that you can get this value however what if you wanted to set this you can't set delta time you can't change the value of this but you can get the value now what if I said time dot time scale which is how fast or which is the basically how fast the game is running um, you'll notice here you can get the value but you can also set the value so I could say time dot time scale equals one that's fine or I could just say time dot time scale and it's gonna return the value I could debug dot log that value now how do we create a property and why would we want a property well just like we saw in time dot delta time obviously unity doesn't want me reassigning this that's gonna give me an error I can't do that Obviously, there are reasons why you would use properties. You don't want people to assign variables that shouldn't be assigned or shouldn't be manipulated. Now, you're probably thinking, well, if you don't want it to be assigned, go ahead and make it private. Well, what if you want it readable but not assigned, right? So that's where properties come in. They allow you to create what's called getters and setters. Getters return the information about the variable, and setters set the values of those variables. So there's a few types of properties. Actually, there's only two properties. You have a, a normal property, and then you have what's called an auto property. Now, I typically use properties in manager classes, um, and I'm going to show you how, how to declare them. The reason why I use them in manager classes is typically it's just a, it's just a preference, but it's also kind of like a standard. Uh, it's clean, and you can easily determine what's changeable and what's not. All right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have here a private variable so I'm gonna say private int my age now what if so it's a private variable of my age so nobody can access it you can't see it in the inspector right but what if I wanted someone to be able to grab the value of my age but not change it that's where property comes in I can create a get property the way you do that is you create a public variable so public int and then the syntax for it is capital letters so my age, and then no uh, semicolon or parentheses, but just open closing brackets. So it's kind of like a class or a function maybe. But basically it's public int my age. I usually use the syntax of a function. And what I need here is I need a getter. So it's the get keyword with more brackets. And what it does is it needs to return a variable. And I'm going to have it turn, sorry, I put underscores on my private variables. I'm going to underscore my age. So how does this work now? Let's go ahead and say here that this was a we have a private variable here and we have a property that's going to get it's going to get and return my age. So when you call this property here, it's going to return the value of underscore my age. So now how do we use this? Well, let's hop into our player class. Or let me go ahead and create another C sharp class, I guess. So let's go and name this uh, my player. Right, I'm going to put this on the cube. How do I access that property? Well, I need I need to basically uh, I need to get access to this properties class, right? So before I can do anything, I need to get a handle to that class, or I could make it static, which is bad practice. So I'm actually just going to get a handle onto it. So I'm going to go ahead and here. I'm going to say private uh, properties, and then my properties. All right. So I have access to it, and what I can do here is I can say my my properties dot my age and you'll notice that the syntax for it is the property syntax and look what it says in the tooltip it's gonna get okay so what I can do now is I can actually debug that message so let's say debug dot log and we're gonna say debug dot log the my age property all right and the property that you're seeing here is exactly what time dot delta time is it's just a property that returns a value well this my age property returns the variable my age we don't want people to set it but we want people to be able to get access just to read what the value is so I'm gonna go ahead and say here that my age is 22 and what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna debug it so let's go ahead and see what it is all right we have an error here uh, I'm missing a semicolon I got an extra one 
All right. So on our cube here, we have my player. Let's go ahead and run it. And it should debug.log. All right, so we got no reference exception. And I'm actually glad we got this. Um, the reason why we're getting this is because I'm, I'm telling it to do something without having access to that object. I'm saying debug.log my properties dot may I age before the program even knows what this variable is. I never set it. So what I need to do is uh, I need to actually set that. So I need to say my properties equals we can say probably a new my properties, I think. We're gonna try that. New properties. Let's see if that works. If it doesn't, I gotta put it on an object. Okay, there we go. That worked. Okay, so here you can see here that it prints out 22. Now what if I wanted to change that value? How could I do that? Well, I can add a setter. So inside the same property, I go right under get, I say set, and I take the value of it. So I say my age, I take the variable I want to change. So we're going to say my age equals, and then you just use the value keyword. Whatever value you pass to the property is going to be assigned to the variable my age. Now, now you're probably thinking if it's get and set, why even bother with making it private? Well, because you can change it later and you don't have to worry about having it public or private. You can use a getter and setter, which is a proper uh, standard technique to use. Properties are good. Use them. All right. Uh, it's any, ask, ask any professional developer. It's almost always better 99% of the time to use private variables. Um, unless a variable needs to be public, uh, it sh unless it needs to be public, otherwise it should be private and you should always have properties. Okay, so let's go ahead and change the value now. So I'm going to jump back into my player here and I'm going to, after debugging along that age, I'm going to go ahead and say here, uh, my properties dot my age, and you'll notice now, look what it says, my age, get and set. So I can get the value, I can also set the value. So I'm going to say equals 88. All right, and then let's go and debug dot log again. I'm going to say my properties dot my age. All right, let's see what happens here. All right, there you go. So it's 22 and then it's 88. All right, now that leads us to one more thing it's called auto properties. So, what is an auto property? An auto property is exactly this, okay, except it's in one line. Now remember, this is to get information, this is to set information. Oftentimes, you can use what's called an auto property. The only time you'd really ever fully write this is if you're going to do some calculations here. You can do a whole bunch of math and calculations. You could do, and you could run some code here and then return my age. You could do the same thing for setting. You can run a bunch of code in between these, which is the benefit of these. So I can have like 100 lines here and then say my age equals value. So with an auto property though, Basically what the syntax for it is, is you have a public property, so public int my age, and then the syntax for it is the open closing brackets, and you say get set, and semicolons after them like that, and that's, a, that's it, that's how you declare it. So here in my player, I can still access it the exact same way. I can say here my properties dot my age, and I can get set. I can say equals 88, or and then I can debug dot log it if I wanted to. All right, now what if I wanted it to be get only? Well, I could simply say here, private set, which means only this class can change it, but everyone else can access it. So check this out. I can say now my properties dot my age, and it's get private set. So if I say equals five, watch what happens. I'm gonna get an error because I'm trying to change it when I don't have access to it. The properties, my age, cannot be used in the syntax. The set -exer, accessor is inaccessible. I'm not allowed to set it because I'm not a part of that class. So you can only get it. So that properties allow you to basically have more control over your variables. Very cool stuff. There's also one more you can do and it's called protected set. And what this does is basically private ver this class can change it and classes that derive properties can change it. So when you get in the class inheritance, uh, the class inheritance can change this value and this class can change this value, but no other classes can change the value. All right, so that's it on properties. Uh, very useful, very cool stuff to use. Uh, the next video, we're going to use them in creating a singleton manager. Thanks, guys. Take care. Don't forget uh, Facebook, digitalgaminginstitute.com.
And my book is out, so go grab a copy. Thanks.